what's up guys it's Mike for Sim Racing 604 and welcome back to Project Cars 2 so uh, far and away the most common question I'm seeing in the comments um, is whether or not people should buy Project Cars 2 primarily based on the handling how does it handle how does it compare to a set of Corsa and that type of question so uh, hoping to answer it here in this video um, it's quite difficult to demonstrate handling uh, to you. You would kind of have to feel it, but um, I think the most important thing is to sort of establish some uh, some kind of metrics. They won't be very scientific, but they will be uh, somewhat, uh, you know, understandable in terms of how the handling is in Project Cars 2 and also how the physics perform and how it all ties back to the force feedback. So the first thing I want to do is take a look at the uh, Radical RXC which is one of the better handling cars in Project Cars 2 and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do some uh, Chris Harris-esque uh, power slides around corners and uh, brake traction at the rear wheels and see if we can recover it. All right, let's take All a look. Right. So I got my uh, my tires nearing temperature here, and uh, so now we are going to uh, start to push a bit and start to break these tires free. But uh, before I do that, I am going to just uh, tell you why I think this is a good test. Uh, the reason I like to do uh, power slides as a demonstration of a Sims force feedback is because you really need that touch. You need to be able to feel your tires breaking free and be able to feel when you have traction again to uh, get back on the accelerator. So, um, and the other thing I should preface is that not all the cars handle anywhere near the same in Project Cars 2, and I mean that in terms of the force feedback ability. Some cars you can, uh, like the Radical RXC, I really like. However, the Sesto Elemento uh, has really got in my bad books. I really want to drive that car. I love the idea of that car, but uh, it's just not happening. I just cannot feel that car. I can't feel anything. Um, so, um, again, the reason I think this is a good test is because you need to be able to feel it uh, break free. You need to feel that in the wheel, but you also need to... Uh, feel it uh, feel that slipping going away and get, be able to get back on the accelerator to uh, accelerate out of the corner so what I'm gonna do here is uh, just pause it and I'm gonna give it some volume I'm gonna mute my mic so you can actually hear the tires breaking free and um, we'll see if I have the ability based on the force feedback in project cars 2 to actually control a slide so this will be test number one of the force feedback in project cars 2 
obviously Chris Harris I am not, but uh, yeah, I think you get the sense uh, from this video that, uh, you know, going into a slide, you know, that kind of controlled oversteer, it handles very, very well in this car. So I think that's a testament to the force feedback in Project Cars 2. But th that's only the first test. It's easy enough to do that at low speed, but uh, I want to see what happens if we take a car and really push it um, and start hitting curbs and things like that. Does the force feedback give us the detail we need even when we hit curbs or uh, something like that? Um, do we still have the feel in the wheel to recover a slide and keep the car on the track, keep the car moving efficiently? So let's take a different car and head out to uh, Imola. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to run a GT3 car out there or something like that. And again, be hopping curbs and try and lose the detail and see if we can still control the car. Let's get out there. All right, so we're back here in the uh, Audi R8 24 hour. GT3 car and we're here at Imola and uh, tires are up to temp so we are going to uh, somewhat push and uh, see what these curbs do to us. Just missed every single curb. <laughs> um, but a good couple of curbs coming up. So, uh, so far I've done my warm up laps and it feels great. Um, even though we are hitting curbs intentionally and hitting them too hard, I'm still not losing a whole bunch of detail and it's still giving me the ability, as you saw, I hit that last curve really, really hard and the car was bouncing but I was still able to recover it, but uh, not comically so. So that's the other side of the coin is that we don't want it too, uh, too stable to the point where we can't lose traction, otherwise it becomes not a sim, it becomes dreaded word we hate, Simcade. This game is not Simcade. I can say that quite definitively. I'll just blind all my viewers by staring directly into the sun. How about that? So yeah, definitely uh, we can feel these curbs in the wheel, but at the same time, like I say, we still have that detail required to, <laughs> to put the car backwards. But uh, lousy driving notwithstanding, the force feedback stands up even when we uh, take a higher speed uh, car around a corner. And, uh, you know, like I said, introduce some of that uh, extra detail that the force feedback needs to account for. This should be a good example here. So a little bounce, not much, but still complete ability to control the car. And we'll do the chicane here one more time, hitting the curve hard. Still came out okay. So I think that's a testament. Um, to this car's ability to uh, handle and, and more notably the force feedback so very very happy so there is one more thing I want to cover and that is the sort of poor handling cars so uh, let's jump into that all right so here we are at Laguna Seca in the Aston Martin DB11 and this is a perfect example of a car with uh, poor force feedback in uh, Project Cars 2 so Again, difficult to demonstrate uh, just in a video, but I can tell you this car has virtually no force feedback, no sense of touch. Uh, whether I'm going 160 like I am now or whether I'm going 20, it feels the exact same. And when the back wheels uh, break loose for oversteer or the front wheels don't find grip for understeer, I can't feel a thing. So, you know, um, Project Cars 2, they, they were very happy and proud with their uh, lineup of 180 cars, and rightfully so, it's the best lineup in, 
in any sim anywhere but uh, you know if, if these cars are virtually undrivable I don't know what the point is really of putting them in a game so I hate to uh, kind of wrap things up on a negative note but uh, there's a few of these cars and by no means have I reviewed all 180 cars in this game um, maybe it's possible that this is one of the very very few that are like this but it just has no sense of, there's nothing tactile about it and as I say it makes it just useless to drive like I can't imagine ever driving the DB11 again so it's very unfortunate because we come from the Radical RXC and the uh, Audi GT3 the 24 hour edition which handle really really good and goes a long way to redeeming uh, Slightly Mad Studios name and then unfortunately we get something like this where uh, again it, it might as well be uh, turned off altogether the force feedback that is so again sorry to uh, end on a negative note but it's just unfortunately what uh, we're facing here in Project Cars 2 but uh, overall, I gotta say, there have been massive, massive improvements. So if you are wondering, should you buy the game and you're a fan of Assetto Corsa or something like that, the answer is absolutely. If, if, the, uh, if the force feedback and handling is what was, you know, filling you with fear and, you know, trepidation, should you buy it, should you not? Uh, the answer is, yeah, you should buy it. You should buy it. There's, um, I mean by all means get a second opinion there's uh, a lot of reviews right now on YouTube that will help you uh, help you decide but from my point of view I think the uh, handling and force feedback has reached the point where is it on par with a set of Corsa no but um, it's very very close and certainly it's more uh, I wouldn't even say the first game was necessarily passable. Once you've got used to Assetto Corsa and kind of feeling things in the wheel, being able to control the car, going to Project Cars 1 is a huge step back. Going to Project Cars 2 is not. So um, that's big credit to Slightly Mad Studios on that. They've done a great, great job with it. Again, some cars are going to handle a whole lot better than others. There seems to be kind of tears, but that's okay. Um, there's just I mean, if you're going to buy it, you're just going to have to accept the fact that some cars will handle worse than others. Um, in this same sort of class, I took out the uh, Ferrari Enzo, and I thought it handled great. So, um, it's possible that this will just be fitch, fixed in a future patch. Um, but for now, we're going to have to work with the ones they've given us with uh, great force feedback that handle great. So, um, there, are, there seem to be a lot of those. So in summary, yes, the force feedback is very much improved and actually very, very good. So thank you so much for watching, and uh, we will see you next time. And uh, I'll probably start to get into graphics and sound and things like that for this really, really cool sim that I love driving. All right, thanks so much for watching, guys.